God, uh, I wouldn't be standing here without praying mom. Many of you know the story, but you never heard it, you know. Uh, between In the summer of 1970, in the middle of the Jesus Revolution, I got gloriously saved uh, as a result of a praying mom. <laughs> and, uh, you know, she didn't do everything right. None of us have. But uh, uh, long story short, went to college, backslid for 20-some years. And it got so, so bad I was riding in my car, riding in the car one day with my mom, and uh, I was just, just so hard-hearted. She just turned to me and she looked at me and she says, she "I just disown you. I don't want to. I don't. I, I just can't be. I just don't want to ever be around you again." And she was just fed up with all the junk. But praise God, God is faithful, and here I am today. <laughs> praise the Lord. Because of a praying mom, and she went to home to the Lord at 95 years young, a few years back. And I mean, talk about a tough old bird. I mean, you know, they tell you we had a couple nurses uh, in our church at that time, and uh, she had to do not resuscitate on her uh, on her file, and we wanted to, uh, of course, honor that. And so. She got to that point where it was obviously it's time to go home. And so she was, she was in Glenwood Springs. We were in Denver. So I talked to her on the phone. And I said, Mom, it's okay. Uh, I'm releasing you. You can go home. I just want to make sure, is this what you want? We're not going to feed you. We're just going to keep you comfortable. She says, yes, that's, that's all I want. And I said, well, I love you, Mom. And I'll talk with you soon. Well, usually between 24 to uh, 72 hours. In that range, most people, after you stop feeding them, and we have nurses in here, we have doctors, so you can tell me if I'm telling the truth. They say, not, usually not more than 72 hours uh, before the person will go home once you stop feeding. Do you know she lived for two weeks? Mom, go home. <laughs> praise the Lord. So, praise the Lord. I've got something I want to do before we release the children here. Uh, would you indulge me this morning for a minute? Hallelujah. I have something on my heart. I have a, I have a, mel I have a tune in my spirit. I have, a, I have a, a melody in my spirit. And I would encourage you, whether you know it or not, it's really easy to learn, but just put your inhibitions aside. Just say, you know, I don't care who's sitting on my right side or who's hitting my left. I don't care who hears me. I don't care if it's in tune or out of tune. It's, it's worship. Would anybody do that with me today? <clears throat> we'll, we'll cut this out of the, of the sermon, obviously. <laughs> All righteousness, peace. Joy in the Holy Ghost, righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. That's the kingdom of God. Righteousness, peace, joy in the Holy Ghost. Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. That's the kingdom of God. One more time. Righteousness, peace, joy in the Holy Ghost. Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. That's the kingdom of God. Don't you want to be a part of the kingdom? Don't you want to be a part of the kingdom? Don't you want to be a part of the kingdom? Come on, everybody. Don't you want to be a part of the kingdom? <coughs> Don't you want to be a part of the kingdom? Come on, everybody. Righteousness, peace, joy in the Holy Ghost. Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. That's the kingdom of God. Righteousness, peace, joy in the Holy Ghost. Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. That's the kingdom of God. Don't you want to be a part of the kingdom? 
Don't you want to be a part of the kingdom? Don't you want to be a part of the kingdom? Mm. Come on, everybody. Don't you want to be a part of the kingdom? Don't you want to be a part of the kingdom? Don't you want to be a part of the kingdom? Mm. Come on, everybody. There is love in the kingdom. There's so much love in the kingdom. There's much love in the kingdom. Come on, everybody. Oh, there's peace in the kingdom. So much peace in the kingdom. There is peace in the kingdom. Come on, everybody. Oh, there's joy in the kingdom. So much joy in the kingdom. There's joy in the kingdom. Come on, everybody. Righteousness, peace, joy in the Holy Ghost. Come on. Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. That's the kingdom of God. Righteousness, peace, joy in the Holy Ghost. Come on, there you go. Uh, one more time. Righteousness, peace. Joy in the Holy Ghost. Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. That's the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I just can't stop singing that. It's just in my spirit. You know what I mean? It's just there. Righteousness, peace, joy in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Oh, yeah. Okay, now we'll... Release the kids if they haven't gone already. I praise the Lord. Mm, righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. That's the kingdom of God. Isn't that the truth? Righteousness, peace, and what? Joy in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. <clears throat> we'll go ahead and put up our uh, confession, if you would, please. Let's say this together. This is my Bible, the inspired and living Word of God, given to all men for all ages. I am what it says I am, I have what it says I have, and I can do what it says I can do. As I'm taught the Word of God, I boldly declare that I have eyes to see, I have ears to hear, and that my heart is open and receptive to the truth of God's Word. And I'll not only be a hearer, but I'll be a doer, I'll be a doer, I'll be a doer of the Word of God, and as I do, I know I will be blessed. Amen and amen. You see, folks, why do we do that every Sunday? That's God's voice-activated universe in action. You will have what you say. My wife is uh, flickering her check here. We're, I, I haven't got there yet, but we're going to receive the offer, our tithes and offerings at the end today, Okay? I have something special I want to share with you. We started a, a mini-series last week, uh, which I entitled, Declaring the Glory of God. And I want to continue with that this morning. But you know what? He says that, you know, we frame our world with our words. And many times, most times, uh, has been the habit of, of myself, I guess, uh, at the end of the message, we spend, you know, a minute or two uh, using God's voice-activated universe, kind of declaring what we just talked about or what we learned or the revelation, I thought, well, why don't we do it at the front today? Was that, would that be all right? Would you stand up? Come on. You, this, is, this is an interactive Sunday. So you've got to get a little bit more interactive here. Say, I am expecting the glory of God. I am expecting the manifest presence of God. The manifest power of God, the manifest goodness of God, to do the unexpected, to do even greater things in my life than ever before. I am looking for some major surprises in my life, in my health, in my finances, and in my relationships. God is the God of surprises. God is the God of the unexpected. God is famous.
for doing these things in my life. Now give him a shout of praise. Woo-wee. Hallelujah. You know, we, get, we, we end our services like that. I said, well, why not start it out like that? Praise God. You may be seated. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. See, what are we doing? We have shouts of praise, shouts of declaration, what we're believing God for. Amen? And when you do that, it may seem a trivial thing, but you are giving God access to your life. Amen? God cannot just go come into someone's life and do whatever he wants to do, which so many Christians believe is the truth. And they wonder why their life has, it, it never changes, it always stays the same. It's because they haven't given him access. Amen? That's the glory of God. His presence in your life is his glory. In the, in the Old Testament, you know, many times that glory would appear sometimes as a smoke or as a cloud. Maybe it's lightning and thunder, a, a mist or a breeze. Uh, but you know what? His manifest presence now, because of Jesus, shows up in his very presence in your life and in my life. Amen? So why should we not praise him this morning? Amen? Why should we not decree and declare his glory over our lives? Amen? Because when you do, now you are giving him access. Amen? I like what Job says. This is uh, Job 5 and verse 9. This is the Message Bible. It says, after all, he is famous for great and unexpected acts. Hallelujah. Let's read that together. After all, he's famous for what? Great and unexpected acts. Is there anyone here this morning believing a great God for, for great and unexpected acts in your life? Hallelujah. Well, praise the Lord. Get ready. I'm not, I'm not just, you know, just pulling your leg. You're get ready. Say, get ready. So let's begin this morning in 1 Chronicles. 1 Chronicles 16. And this is uh, the Amplified Classic. And in verse 24, he says this. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous works among all peoples. Did you realize that that's what your life is all about from the time that you get up to the time that you go to bed? That you should be, your life should be declaring the glory of God to the nations? Hallelujah. Skip down to verse 28. It says, ascribe. Ascribe basically means a sign. Ascribe to the Lord, you families of the peoples. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Bring an offering and come before him. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness and in holy array. Hallelujah. And so we're going to do just that at the end of the service today. So just putting you on notice, this is what we're going to do at the end. Amen? Hallelujah. Now go down to verse 35. What are the first two words there? And what? Say. Turn to your neighbor. Tell them there's something that you are supposed to say. Well, what is that, Pastor Chris? He says, and say, save us, O God of our salvation. Gather us together and deliver us from the nations that we may give thanks to your holy name and glory in your praise. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, forever and ever. And all the people said, Amen, and praised the Lord. Hmm. Did you hear that last line? You just missed it. You just missed it. And all the people said, Amen, and praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And, and all the people said, Amen, and praise the Lord. Glory to the God of Israel. He is delivering us from the nations. Whether you realize it or not, this thing that has happened 
it's been decades in the work, but since 2020, when the pandemic, they are trying to do everything they can to destroy this country because they realize this country is too strong to, to implement the plan that they want for this earth. So in other words, until they can take out the United States, they can't fulfill this plan that they have for the planet. But I'm telling you, God is standing in the way. Hallelujah. That's why he said, let's read it again. He said, and say, save us, O God, of, of our salvation. Gather us together and deliver us from the nations. Hallelujah. See, that's God's voice activated universe at its finest. Amen. There's very some, there, excuse me, there's something very powerful when you open your mouth and by faith begin to decree and declare the word of the Lord. We need to be doing more of it. Amen? Because again, this voice-activated universe that we live in, God said, not uh, God said, you will have what you say. Is that correct? Now, I understand. If you have unbelievers in your family or neighbors or people you work with or whatever, you begin decreeing and declaring some things, people are going to make fun of you. They're going to laugh at you. They're going to mock you. Oh, you're one of those blabbed and grabbed people. Hmm. You're one of those confess it and possess it people. You're one of those name it and claim it people. Yeah, you bet I am. Because that's what Jesus said I can do. And that's what Jesus himself did. That's the way God designed it. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. That's the way you and I imitate our Heavenly Father. By saying what he says over our lives. Uh, Job twenty two twenty eight. we'll put it on the screen for you. <clears throat> In the King James it says, you shall decree a thing, and what? It shall be established unto you, and the light shall shine upon your ways. I like it in the Amplified, if you put that up. Hallelujah. He says, you shall also decide and decree a thing, and it shall be established for you, and the light of God's favor shall shine on your ways. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So what is that we are to decree and declare? Well, not just whatever strikes your fancy, because that's where people have gotten off. That's where uh, people like you and me, word of faith people, whatever, that's why we've taken such bad raps, because we don't, you don't just say whatever comes to mind. You don't just say the first thoughts, whatever's, you know, uh, at, the, at the tip of your tongue. No, we're number one, we're to speak the word of God, Number two, we're supposed to speak whatever the Holy Spirit tells us or orders us to speak. Those are the only two things right there. Number one, the Word of God. Number two, what the Holy Spirit says. Now, be mindful. Here's again where people mess up. The Holy Spirit will never give you something to say that contradicts the Word of God. If it does, you need to throw it out in the garbage bin. Are you listening to me? Hallelujah. When you speak the living, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> when you speak the living word of God over your life, if you were here last week, there were two things that happened. Does anybody remember what those were? Hallelujah. You ladies especially should know. What's number one happens? Angels become deployed on your behalf. Amen. And what's the second thing? Maybe we need to go back to next week. The Holy Spirit goes to work on your behalf. When you decree and declare the word of God over your life, over a situation, over your circumstances, whatever it be, number one, the angels become deployed, and number two, the Holy Spirit goes to work on your behalf. And that's why he says, the favor of God shall shine upon your ways. That's what the favor of God is all about. He'll change people's minds. He'll change their decisions. He'll make things favorable where they weren't favorable. Why? Because the angels have been deployed and the Holy Spirit is at work. I don't care if he has to change a whole nation in order to bring something to you. If that's what he's promised, he'll do it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's nothing like the favor of God 
happening in your life. That's why, you know, I can sit here today and just, just shake my head that when we have a person like Dr. Jerry Savelle, who is known around the world as, does anybody know? Dr. what? Favor. Why you would not come and sit in, an, in a, 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 a service with him and let a little bit of that favor rub off on you? Hallelujah. Let me try it over here. You know, let a little bit of that favor run off on you. Hallelujah. Folks, this is the way Jesus operated when he lived on this earth. By only speaking and by only saying what he heard the Father say. So let's look at that. I mean, I'm going to give you, uh, the Bible says that in the mouth of what? Two or three witnesses what happens? Everything becomes established. Okay. What if I gave you six this morning? Would that establish it? Okay, well, that's what I'm going to do. John 5, 19 in the Amplified. So Jesus answers them by saying, I assure you most solemnly, I tell you, the Son is able to do nothing of himself, of his own accord, but he is able to do only what he sees the Father doing. For whatever the Father does is what the Son does in the same way and in his turn. So right there, that's the only scripture you need. If somebody says, well, that was Jesus. You know, he was God. He could do that. Wrong. He did it only, he did it one as a 100% flesh and blood man. He did not do the things he did as God. Thank you for your enthusiasm. He says, I tell you, who's speaking here? Are these red letters? The son is able to do how much uh, by himself? Nothing. I don't know where you grew up, but in Colorado, nothing means nothing. Amen? Look at verse 30. I can of my own self do nothing. Oh, that was Jesus. He was God. Of course Jesus could do that. Uh-uh. I can of my own self do what? Nothing. nothing. I hear, I judge, and my judgment is just because I seek not my own will but the will of the Father who sent me. John 8:26. I have many things to say and judge of you, but he that sent me is true, and I speak to the world those things which I have heard of him. What did Jesus speak? Only the words he heard the Father say. Go down to verse 38. I speak that which I've seen with my Father, and you do that which you've seen of your Father. If you ever wondered why Jesus would go away all night and pray is because he had to hear what the Father was saying. So when he, in the morning then he had the plan, he had the purpose, he knew what to say, he knew what to do, and he knew where to go. Why? Because the Father had told him. It was not Jesus' plan, it was the Father's plan. John 14, 10. Believe thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwells in me, he does the works. And one more, John 14, 24. He that loves me not, he that loveth me not, keepeth not my sayings. And the word which you hear is not mine, but it is the Father's which sent me. Is there any ambiguity there, what we've, six verses, that what words that Jesus spoke? What words did he speak? Father's words. Amen? Hallelujah. How many believe that everywhere Jesus went, the presence, the power, and the goodness of God went with him? See, that's how we define the glory of God. 
It's his manifested presence, his manifested power, and his manifested goodness in your life. That is the glory of God. You are the glory of God. Amen? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So right here, are you listening? How many would like to have a greater anointing on your life? I'm going to share with you the key this morning. Amen? This is the key to walking in the blessing of God. This is the key for God showing up everywhere you go. John 3.34 says, For whom God has sent speaks the words of God, for God gives not the Spirit by measure unto him. Now again, here's something very, very misunderstood by so many church people today. God gave Jesus the Holy Spirit without measure because he was God. What did we just say? Was Jesus God, operating as God? No. He was 100% man. Why then or how could God give a man the Spirit of God without measure? Hmm? You say, well, Jesus didn't sin. That is correct. He did not sin. The reason that God gave him the Spirit without measure is because God knew that Jesus would only say what he heard the Father say. Therefore, he could trust him with an unlimited anointing. Do you see the application this morning to your life? If you want to see a greater anointing of God on your life, no matter where you go or no matter what you're doing, make sure to speak only the words that God tells you to speak. Or only do the things He tells you to do. Or only go to the place He tells you to go. Do you see that this morning? Hallelujah. God gave Him the Spirit without measure. Why? God knew he could, tr could trust Jesus with that power. What power is that? You'll have what you say. Just think, if you and I, right now, think back just, just a week, if you had everything that you said, would it be good? Or would it be bad? Or would it be a mixed bag? There are... There, you know, we say some dumb things, right, don't we? Thank God when we say the dumb things, God doesn't give us the dumb thing. You know what I'm saying? But we're in training. We're training ourselves to hear and say what we hear God and, and, and hear God speak to us and say. Amen? That means we need to stop reacting to the things that come against us with our emotions, with our words of doubt and unbelief, and speak only what God says. Amen? Hallelujah. If you will get yourself to that point, then that means that no matter what the enemy will try and bring in your life, the first thing that pops up in your mouth is the Word of God. The minute he tries to come against you, the Word of God. Something bad happens, the Word of God. You get a bad report, the Word of God. Something bad happens to you, the Word of God. First words are important. We need to get ourselves, and I, I'm included in myself, I'm not, I've, I by no means have arrived. I'm certainly, thank God I'm better than I used to be. We need to arrive at a point where God knows that He can trust us with the words we say. Hallelujah. You and I are called to declare the glory of God over the nations. And when we do, that means the manifest presence, the manifest power, and the manifest goodness of God is going to show up big time. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Somewhere in this book, 
just I had it right in my hand and just this escaped me. God tells us, I think it's Isaiah, he says, God's ways are not our ways. Is that right? He says, your thoughts are not my thoughts. Now, he didn't say you couldn't have his thoughts. Right? He just says naturally. So we need to seek him and find out what those thoughts, what his ways are. But if, if his thoughts are so much higher than our thoughts, why do we fuss and fret and try and figure out how is it that God is going to meet my needs? How is God going to solve this problem? How is God going to intervene in this situation or this circumstance? Amen? Hallelujah. See, it just doesn't make sense to try and sit there all day and all night and try and figure out how in the world is God going to do this? Am I speaking to the right bunch? You are so quiet this morning. Because when you do that, you're trying to figure out something that is only going to cause you frustration. Hallelujah. God is going to bring it to pass, but it's going to be on a higher level than you and I can think. Amen? God has no limitations. We sang about it today, didn't we? No limitations. Don't put God in a box. And here's the other thing. If he does something and marvelous and we think, wow, that was awesome, then the next time something comes up, we expect him to do it the same way again. And most times he will not. It'll be a different way. Hallelujah. You know, early, I think about Brother Jerry. Early in, in Brother Jerry's ministry, God very clearly said, told Brother Jerry, you will not be able to do what I've called you to do without owning your own airplane. Okay? But in the same breath, he said also, I don't want you to fly an airplane that has debt on it. And, you know, of course, without getting in a bunch of details this morning, uh, most of you know now that 11 planes later, Jerry has never had a single dollar of debt on any plane he's flown. Amen? But see, when he began, he didn't know anybody that flew planes without debt other than Brother Copeland. So what did he do? Well, I'm going to sow into his, into his aviation department. God told us. He doesn't want us owning a building with a mortgage on it. I don't have a clue how God is going to do that. I've never had a debt-free building. But we've sowed seed into ministries that do. Are you seeing what I'm talking about here? Amen. So what is it in your life that God has said to you? What is it that he's promised to you? What are you believing God for? That to this point, you've never seen come to pass, and you can't think in a million years how in the world it could. But yet God is able, is he not? Yes. Then you need to find someone, or some ministry, or some church, or whatever, and sow into that person, or sow into that ministry, or sow into that whatever, that has experienced what you're believing God for. Come on, somebody. Yes. Ephesians 3.20. In the King James, it says, Now unto him that is able to do what? Exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. Look at it in the Amplified. It says, Now to him, by an inconsequence of the action of his power that is at work within us, is able to carry out his purpose and to do super abundantly, far, above, far over and above all that we dare ask or think, infinitely beyond our highest prayers, desires, thoughts, hopes, or dreams. Is that the God that's more than enough? The Message Bible says it like this. God can do anything. He can do anything you know far more than you could ever imagine or guess or request in your wildest dreams. He does it not by pushing us around, by working within us, His Spirit deeply and gently within us. Hallelujah. Praise God. But you got to say something. Brother Jerry, by the, by the prompting of the Holy Spirit, has told us we're living in the year of the maximum. The year of the highest level obtainable. And we're not quite through half the year yet, and I'm believing for God, 
I'm believing God for some great things in my church, in our family, in my life. How about you? Hallelujah. God told the prophet to say this to us. He said, this is your time for your greatest victories and to begin to expect the unexpected and be watching for surprises. Can I read that again? This is your time for your greatest victories and to begin to expect the unexpected and be watching for surprises. Anybody in here like surprises? <laughs> Hallelujah. God is working on it now. Say now. now. We are headed for some major surprises in our lives. Amen. God is working behind the scenes. God is working on some major surprises for some of you. So begin to expect the unexpected. Begin to look for some major surprises. Say major. major. Hallelujah. What do you suppose God is dreaming up for your life right now? Well, how is he going to do that? I don't have a clue, and neither do you. You don't need to. He didn't ask you. How do I say this, Lord? Maybe help me say it correctly. He didn't ask you to pay for it. He didn't ask you to buy it. He didn't ask you to build it. What did he ask you to do? To believe for it. Because all things are possible to whom? Him who what? Believes. Not who has a seven-figure bank account. He who believes. Are there any believers in here today? I sense this by the power of the Holy Spirit this morning that there are some unexpected things that are about to take place in your life. There are some major surprises that are headed your way. Hallelujah. Someone give God a shout. Praise him. But see, you have to put a voice to those things. You have to speak them out in order to give God access to your life. Hallelujah. In fact, uh, when talking with Brother Jerry, God has already showed him what's about to happen to many of you. But God did not allow him to tell you because then it wouldn't be a surprise. This is the mirror translation. I don't know if I've ever used this in here before. We don't have it on our screen either, so just listen. This is Ephesians 3.20. It says, We celebrate him who supercharges us powerfully from within. Our biggest request or most amazing dream cannot match the extravagant portion of his thoughts towards us. Ooh, baby, we can't even begin to imagine how, how much God wants to bless us, how much he wants to surprise us. Nor can we expect or figure out how he's going to do it. So just tr stop trying to figure it out and begin to what? Thank him. Say thank him. See, when God says that his ways are not our ways, that word ways means it's a way that's pu pr procured, it's a way to, it comes to pass. It is a, it's how the end is achieved. It's how it's obtained. And it's not, it, it is not in any way the way you and I would do it. Let's put it that way. So stop laying in bed at night. Stop tossing and turning, worrying, being anxious, thinking about how in the world, contemplate, how in the world is God going to do this? God is going to do it, pure and simple. If he's promised you, and if you've given voice and, and put your faith to it, guess what? It will come to pass. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. My Bible says God neither sleeps nor slumbers. Is that correct? So if he neither sleeps nor slumbers, well then, I'll just leave that to God. I'm just going to go to sleep. I'm going to get a good night's sleep. I'm going to wake up rested and peaceful. And while I'm sleeping, man, God can work on it. That's his deal. I'll let him worry about it. You know, in a figure of speech, he's not worrying about it. He knows exactly how he's going to do it. But I'm just going to leave that thing up to God 
Why should I toss and turn all night and wake up completely anxious and fearful? What did I achieve? You just lost a good night's sleep. That's about the only thing you achieved. Hallelujah. Let's just leave it up to God. That's why it says cast your cares on him. Why? Because he cares for you. Amen. In fact, uh, oh, I won't go there. Hmm. Okay. I won't spend a lot of time with it. But actually, when you put the burden of that thing on yourself, God calls that pride. And who does God resist? He resists the proud, but he gives grace to whom? The humble. See, now you see the importance of casting that thing over on him. Amen? So just start praising him. Just start thanking him. See, the reason that thanksgiving is so powerful in our lives is that by faith, thanksgiving acknowledges, watch this, that we have received what we've asked God for. Even though you don't see it in the natural yet, if you are thanking God by faith for something, you are saying, I believe I have it, I believe I take it, I believe it's mine, even though I don't yet see it in the natural. Come on, somebody. Thanksgiving is an acknowledgement of that grace that's been received. It's an acknowledgement. It's just like Mark 11, 23 and 24. Believe, when you pray, believe that you what? That you take it. That you, that, that, that's yours. Amen? Thanksgiving is a, an acknowledgement of that grace received. Hallelujah. God gave me this statement right before I came out here this morning. Faith doesn't believe what it sees. Faith sees what it believes. Let me say that again. Faith doesn't believe what it sees. Faith sees what it believes. Hallelujah. Once you begin to understand that process, you begin to see things differently. Amen? Hallelujah. I see this place completely packed out. I see people waiting at the door for the next service because there's not enough room for them in the first service. Yeah. What are you talking about, Pastor? I see it by faith. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Here's another thing that so many people in the church take for granted. They take the praise and worship time just for granted. Too many people have viewed our worship and, and our praise time as entertainment. Entertain me. Who can you put on the stage? Who is the greatest vocalist? Who's the greatest guitar player? Who's the greatest keyboardist? Dazzle me with your videos. Give me your light show. Give me your most talented vocalists and musicians. Come on, baby, skinny jeans and fog machines. Give it to me, baby. Give it to me. No wonder so many churches are dead. That's not what it's all about. It is about the manifest presence of the glory of God in our worship. Hallelujah. 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 Our worship. During our work, we are ascribing to the Lord glory and praise and honor. Hallelujah. And that makes him, that causes him to move. That causes him to show up. It causes him to show off. Amen. And I don't mean that in a negative, prideful way. God wants to do good to every person. But God will not manifest to every person. Because those people hold him back by what they say. Hallelujah. Go over to 2 Chronicles chapter 5 with me, please. Hallelujah. I guess I am going to get done early today, honey, to answer your question. 
For those of you who had Mother's Day plans, praise the Lord, you'll get out early and spend time wherever you're going or with your family or friends or neighbors or whatever. 2 Chronicles 5 and verse 13 it says, it came even to pass, as the trumpeters and singers were as one, to make one sound to be heard in praising and thanking God. Do you see your part? What's your part? Praising and thanking God, or praising and thanking the Lord. See, so many people have this mindset that God owes them. The entitlement, uh, how should I say that, Lord? The entitlement mindset that so many people in this country have today, thinking that uh, the society owes them, the government owes them, uh, my family owes them, the church owes me, whatever it is. That's not God. We don't deserve anything. Well, I should say we do deserve something, but you don't want what you deserve. Jesus took what he didn't deserve, so that we could get what we didn't deserve, which was his grace and mercy. Amen? So he says, It came even to pass, as the trumpeters and singers were as one, to make one sound to be heard in praising and thanking the Lord. And when they lifted up their voice with the trumpets and cymbals and instruments of music, and praise the Lord, saying, For he is good, for his mercy endureth forever, that then the house was filled with a cloud, even the house of the Lord, so that the priest could not stand to minister by reasons of the cloud, for the glory of the Lord had filled the house of God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Would you just close your eyes, lift your hands for a moment, lift your voice. Lord, show us your glory. Lord, show us your glory today. Lord, we, we love you. We lift you up. We ascribe to you glory and honor and majesty and power and might. We honor you today. Show us your glory. Show us your glory in this house. In this day and in this time, show us your glory, Lord. Hallelujah. Show us your glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, we worship you, Lord. Oh, we ascribe glory and honor and power and might and dominion and authority and majesty and might. Oh, you are a great God. We honor you. We magnify your name today. And we say, show us your glory. Show us your glory, Lord. Show us your glory. Hallelujah. Did you sense the shift? The glory of the Lord just came in like a wave in a greater extent than it was here before. Hallelujah. His manifested presence, His manifested power, His manifested goodness is here. Glory to God. Hallelujah. How is God going to get that land to you? How is he going to get that building, that house, that home? 
How is he going to pay off that car, that mortgage, that note? How is that much money ever going to come in? I can hear God right now saying, surprise, 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 surprise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oof. Mm. Well, we just, with lack of a better term, we just stumbled on something very powerful. <laughs> Hallelujah. Lord, I thank you that you are the God of surprises. You are the God of more than enough. You are the God that is bigger than every desire, every thought, every hope, every dream, everything that we could hope or imagine. You are bigger than. So Lord, we just humble ourselves before you and we simply say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for surprises. Hallelujah. Things we never dreamed or imagined. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm going to date myself here, but ever, some of you know who I'm talking about. Remember Gomer Pyle? What was one of his favorite sayings? That. Surprise, surprise, surprise. That's what God is saying this morning. Yes, not, not like that. This is what Brother Jerry said about our building. He said, God getting that building to you is just as much of a manifestation of his glory as if he walked in here right now in the flesh and touched you on the forehead. How is he going to do it? I don't have a clue. And the good news, I don't have to. And you don't either. Hallelujah. My job, your job, is to decree and declare it and then say thank you by faith because I've received it. Amen. Hallelujah. And then I just praise and praise and praise and praise. Hallelujah. My job, your job, is to declare his glory over this country. Declare his glory over the nations of the earth. And watch as his presence, his power, and his goodness manifest in our lives. See, that is a manifestation of the glory of God. Here's, here's, this is, I, you know, how many know I have a doctorate? And I don't put a whole bunch of creed in it. But this is a doctorate statement, okay? Let God be God. Of course, I'm joking. Not about the doctorate, not the, not the statement. Let God be God. 
Come on, say that with me. Let God be God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> so here we go. I would be remiss not now to give you an opportunity to sow, but not just sow anything, to sow into the word that you heard today. You might want to write this statement down. Some of you may be the first time you've ever heard it. Some it may be a repeat. So I want you, watch this. Was there anointing in here today? Is it still here? How many have, have received some revelation as a result of that anointing? The very same anointing that brings the revelation in your life is also the very same anointing that multiplies your seed. Put up 1 Chronicles 16 again, please, Marjorie. 1 Chronicles. 1 Chronicles 16. Should be up near the front, near the... No, it's up at the top of the list there. Just look for it. We started with it today. The very same anointing that brings revelation in your life is this exact same anointing that will multiply your seed. And because of that, and I'll just be honest with you, it's... It's been a quandary in my heart for some time that's, that maybe we really should be receiving the offering at the end on a regular basis because of that very word, because there has, there's revelation that comes when the word is preached. And then that revelation, that same anointing that brought the revelation to your heart is going to continue as you sow into the word to multiply your seed. Hallelujah. Did you find? There we go. Uh, 1628. He says, Ascribe to the Lord, you families of the peoples. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Bring an offering and come before him. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness and holy array. Now, maybe some of you for the very first time will understand that many times, in fact, I try and say it every service, following our worship time when we're ready after the announcements and things, let's continue to worship God in the giving of our tithes and offerings. Because now you can see right here, that's exactly what it is when we give. It is a form of worship. Hallelujah. Now, as you're getting your, your, your giving ready, hallelujah. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Now, that word glory in the Hebrew, the very First time it's used. Now watch this. Here's this is going to mess up a lot of people's theology today. The very first time the word glory is used is in Genesis 31:1, and he's talking about Laban and Jacob, and he says, "And he heard the word." This is not on the screen. I'm just going to read it. And he heard the words of Laban's son saying, "Jacob." hath taken away all that was our father's, and of that which was our father's, he hath he has gotten all this glory. The first time the word is used, the word glory is used is in connection with abundance. Go down to 
Exodus 24, 16, and the glory of the Lord abode upon Mount Sinai. A same exact word. And, he, and the sight of the glory of the Lord was like a devouring fire on the top of the mount. Same exact Hebrew word. When Moses said, I beseech you, Lord, show me your glory. Same exact Hebrew word. How did the Lord respond? And it shall come to pass while my glory passes by that I will put you in a cleft of the rock and I will cover thee with the band of my hand while I pass. Same exact word. If you look it up in the Hebrew, it means glory, honor, abundance, and riches, and splendor, and dignity, and honor, and reverence. When God multiplies your seed, that is the glory of God in your life. Whew. Praise the Lord. Proverbs 11.25, the liberal person shall be enriched, and he who waters shall himself be watered. The message says, the one who blesses others is abundantly blessed, and those who help others are helped. See, the church for way too long has not had a true revelation of what prosperity is really all about. Watch this. You might want to write this down. Prosperity is, say is, prosperity is the manifest glory of God in your life. And it's not just for you, it's for the people around you as well. It's so the blessing can go around the world to all the nations. Too many people, do I have your attention? Too many people in the church think they're trying. They're trying to get prosperity from God. No, 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 no. Prosperity is something that the devil is trying to take away from you. Prosperity is your right by way of covenant with God. And as long as you're trying to get prosperity, you will not be able to see yourself there, and, or you won't be able to see yourself with it, and you'll never experience it. Hallelujah. Just understand, prosperity is your covenant right. Healing is you. You don't have to try and get healed. Healing is your, the devil is trying to steal it from you. He's trying to steal your health. I can tell you this morning, with, with beyond a shadow of a doubt, no matter what you're going through, and I know some of you are going through some things, no matter what you're going through, that thing came to pass, not to stay. Psalm 41, 11 in the message says, Meanwhile, I'm sure, talking about God, I'm sure you are on my side. No victory shouts from the enemy camp. What does that mean? That means the enemy is not going to win. Hallelujah. There are no victory shouts from the enemy camp where you are concerned, my friends. Hallelujah. This is the year of the greater glory. Hallelujah. This is the word of God to you today. The glory of God. His manifested presence, His manifested power, His manifested goodness to you. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, when the presence of God shows up, every attack of the enemy has to cease. You need money, you need jobs. I'm telling you, it is the goodness of God that gets it done. You need healing. His power is more than enough. Say this after me. This is my time to experience greater manifestations of his presence, of his power, and of his goodness. Now I say, now I say, I receive it and I thank you for it in Jesus' name. Now give him a shout of praise. 
This is your time for your greatest victories. Begin to expect the unexpected. Begin watching for surprises. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So go ahead, wait on the people, receive the offering. We're going to worship. Go ahead.